Enduro bikes are made to cover a wide variety of terrain and uses, serving as the everyday driver for many consumers riding their local trail network and maybe some bike parks on the weekend to attacking the gnarliest terrain at EDR World Cups under some of the best athletes in the world. We opted for bike park laps at Snow Summit in Big Bear Lake, California to get our six long travel bikes as close to the limit as possible in a relatively controlled environment. Our test dives into the initial impressions of each bike, their on-trail performance, what we liked or didn't like, and what kind of rider we think each bike is for. We choose which bike we would take home if we can get one for free in the configuration we tested, and which bike we would buy with the ability to change frame size or any components. In this video, we'll be talking about the Intense Tracer. If you're looking for a different bike or want to see all the bikes we tested, refer to the main test session video. Intense has a long history of building race winning bikes and is carrying on that legacy with the Intense factory race team and with the Tracer 279. With one win under its belt and a second place overall in the U21 EWS overall beneath Seth Sherlock, the Tracer 279 is a very promising platform from Intense and proven to be competitive on track. Stepping away from the VPP designs of the past, the newest Tracer uses Intense's own JS Link. The Tracer uses a mixed wheel setup with 165mm of rear wheel travel and a 170mm fork. Our test bike was specced with the Pro Level Build Kit, which retails for just under $6,000 featuring a Fox 38 Flip Performance Elite Series fork and Fox DHX2 Performance Elite shock. Braking and shifting are handled by a Shimano XT 12-speed drivetrain and XT 4-piston brakes. E13 components are found throughout with LG1 aluminum wheels, Helix base cranks, race carbon bar, along with a travel adjustable dropper. ODI intense braining grips are a nice touch to finish out the build. A geometry adjust flip chip is found in the lower link of the bike with high and low settings. Intense suggests the high setting for more technical terrain and the low for bike park style terrain. We kept it in the low setting for the duration of the test. Our size XL tracer had a comfortable 500mm reach paired to a 645 degree head tube angle for a relatively neutral body position on the bike. The shorter 1287mm wheelbase with 439mm chainstay length made for a snappy handling on trail. The 77.9 degree CT bangle provided an upright pedaling position. With the Tracer finding success in world class level enduro races and intense stepping away from the VPP driven bikes of the past to their own platform, how did the Tracer stack up? So yeah, I just wrapped up riding the uh, Intense Tracer 279 and uh, straight away felt surprisingly really comfortable on it. Um, after hearing Charlie and Lear's feedback, I didn't have the highest hopes, but Super comfortable for me right off the bat. These like dirt jump bars really helped. Um, I really like the geometry of this bike. Where the bottom rack was at, where the head, ang head angle was at, all the geometry. Like, you know, like all these bikes, once we put a proper rise bar on it. For an XL. Um, for an XL <laughs> person, yeah. It, it really felt like it had a good geo and I felt really comfortable on the bike. But yeah, it was, it, it just didn't absorb the bumps. Mm -hmm. I went, a little bit softer on the spring than what was recommended and just never stop changing it throughout the day so it's really kind of hard to find the sweet spot I was kind of just playing with spring rate rebound was fully closed and really fast mm -hmm. compression was two or three clicks from open and the reason for that was right off the top it felt really good and then it just as you described hit a wall of compression where when you're having those higher speed impacts on trail, it just would skate everywhere. Crossing the ski run, hitting a bunch of little kind of skipper bumps, it was insane. It was super active, did a really good job of that, but then you go to something like 10 ply where those bumps, those holes become bigger and you're hitting them about, you know, a similar speed. It just, yeah, like I'd be holding a line and just falling off of it. If you're trying to hold high line or kind of bouncing wide in turns because the wheel would just kind of skate around. I think the bike was kind of over sprung for almost, well, we swapped some springs out and stuff. I think I was running the 500 pound spring, mm -hmm. which to me felt like a bike park spring, like it would, mm -hmm. or like a bike park setting. Like it had, like you said, kind of that nice soft off the top, but then a lot of platform to push into jumps. And mm -hmm. I think like I went probably the highest on the hip on this bike just yeah. cause I like was really, <laughs> yeah, like really able to push into it and mm -hmm. like pop off of it, which felt super fun. Yeah. And landing off of that jump felt great. Like it, mm. I finally was able to break through that progressive wall and then it mm. felt like this kind of bottomless travel. Yeah, any time that you're like set halfway through the travel in like some chatter and then you were to hit like a square edge, it was all over. 
that it wasn't quite enough yeah. to like break through that progressive wall and then it would just buck the back wheel and then having the 27.5 back wheel just kind of enhances that feeling. I have nothing meaningful to say about the suspension on this bike. I have no clue how it rides because I didn't ever get the right spring rate. So I just felt a very stiff rear end the whole time. It was just like, like I said, I got really good at avoiding all the bumps. It's a bummer because it feels like <clears throat> the fit and geo is great. I thought it was super comfortable. <clears throat> well, because it's the Performance Elite rear mm -hmm. shock, is that right? It's relying on base valve shims for high speed compression, low speed compression. And so mm -hmm. I wonder if a more open high speed compression base tune yeah. would feel better. Like it would have more, it wouldn't hit that wall halfway through. Mm -hmm. And then Lear, everything that you described about being like bucked when you got deep into the travel on lips, I feel like that would benefit a lot. Like when you're in the really progressive zone with a lot of spring wound up, more high speed rebound damping on the base tune could feel better. For people who are wondering what on earth we're talking about with shock tunes, uh, there's knobs on all these shocks where I, as a customer, can adjust the setting of the damping valves, whether that's the rebound valve or the compression valve, but there's also non-adjustable damping that's built into the shock and that's selected <clears throat> by the manufacturer. And Fox, for instance, has like 15 or 20 different bass tunes that are available for different sort of suspension platforms that matches the curve of the suspension. So basically what I'm hearing from my friends here about the intents is the intents might need to go back and redo their homework on this one. The Geo felt good. It felt like the bike was probably where I wanted it to be. The shifting felt nice. I really like the integrated fender. Um, Down yeah. Down storage is cool. <clears throat> yeah, like there were cool things about the bike, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get good. Another thing with the Tracer was there was quite a bit of noise out of it, which couldn't really put my finger on but it did have a fair amount of negative travel. When you pick the bike up from its static position, it would have quite a bit of movement out of the lower link. It'd be interesting to try, yeah, factory level shock, something with a lot more adjustment. Maybe even an air shock that's more linear. Yeah, I think, I was thinking the same thing, I didn't say it, but you can actually be more linear with an air shock than a coil shock, depending on how it's set up. So yeah, potentially that could be really good. I'd be curious if the high and low settings would change that leverage rate. It felt good in the low, so we kind of left it there. It's funny though, because these are made here in California, or they're designed here in California. They're pretty much tested here. Mm -hmm. So you would think that, yeah, this would be kind of the type of terrain, but you know, I'd be curious to try it somewhere that's maybe like slower speed, bigger compressions, like steep Northwest riding or something, and just see how because, you know, maybe it would have that nice small off the top for the roots yeah. and then act real well in that slower speed compression, but it didn't seem yeah. to like the high speed to me. And that's what was so confusing because there was so much traction in the first part when you're kind of like picking your way through and then you'd open it up and it would just rattle you offline. With super supportive suspension and geometry that two out of three testers felt comfortable on, what kind of rider is the Tracer 2794? This bike is for if you really just want to ride bike parks a lot um jump trails awesome i yeah. think I'm trying to think of like if you were to race enduro on it and it generates speed so well that that would be an advantage it changes direction well until you start hitting compressions and then it's kind of up to you to make it hold a line but like riding the steep stuff wanting to point it in a direction was really easy at lower speeds but then at higher speeds really hard to hold on to this might be a sea otter downhill bike that would be a perfect application for it right totally <laughs> it so. potentially could be really good for a newer level rider maybe yeah. where you're not having yeah you're not hitting as high of speeds but it has all that progressiveness to like save you, overshoot, you. Yeah, if you overshoot yeah. something it's you a very case safe a, feeling case a big jump mm. fall into a hole that you're not sure about yeah like it could really save you from that so you know maybe it's just a little bit more of like a a newer racer platform you know or a newer yeah. rider yeah where you're progressing and mm -hmm. you're going to be trying stuff that's kind of scary or you're not going to plan for it to go one way or the other if you're looking at this bike consider maybe a higher end shock as an upgrade or having someone help you really dial it in that has a uh, you know telemetry set or something so you could really understand what's going on oh that was the intense tracer good bike park bike to see how the rest of the test pool stacked up check out the full enduro bike test session video or for more details on each specific bike head over to vitalmtb.com